Welcome back everybody. We're starting a new series today going over all the races that are available to play in the Humblewood campaign. Glad you could join us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and give us a thumbs up so more friends can find us. So today we're starting a series going through all the different Humblewood races that you can play. Now Humblewood is a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign setting. It's put out by the Deck of Many and not uh, Wizards of the Coast, but it is a setting that is 5th edition compatible. So this means you still need your player's handbook, a Dungeon Master's Guide, things like that. It uses the same rule set. But what it does is it offers you a completely different world to play in and a lot of different character options. So we're going to go over the different races that you can choose from. Humblewood actually has bird folk races and humble folk races. And the first of the bird folk races we're going to go over today in this series is the Corvum. Now the Corvum are your crow-like races. Now the book describes them as having dark feathers and sharp minds. And that it's believed that they only look out for themselves but they're also very crafty and tend to get what they want. Uh, they also trade information the way others trade goods. Hmm, that would make for some really, really good role-playing. Now, the main focus of the Corvum, their main ability thing here, is that they get plus two to intelligence. Um, they are described as most likely to be lawful neutral, but you can play any alignment that you want. They are typically four and a half to five and a half feet tall, around 100 pounds, and their size is considered medium. So like I said in a previous video, even though we're playing woodland creatures, they're not tiny little woodland creature size compared to us humans in our world. These are humanoid creatures in Humblewood, okay? Uh, they have a walking speed of 30 feet, and they have a feature that most of the bird folk have. In fact, they may all have it. I'll have to check. Um, but a feature called glide. Now, while these bird folk cannot actually fly, they have wings, they're covered in feathers, but they cannot flap their wings and fly. They're five feet tall and 100 pounds. But they do have some things they can do with their feathers, and one of them is glide. Now, what this does is it allows them to slow their fall and glide a short distance. They're going to be able to fall gently 60 feet per round and take no damage when they land. Now one, um, what do you want to call it? One hindrance, I guess, to this is that you can't use the glide action if you are ha carrying heavy weapons, a shield, or heavy armor. Um, another option that Corvums get is talons. Now they have big talons on their feet and these have two purposes. They can either use them in combat. I cannot talk today. They can either use them for unarmed combat and they do 1d4 piercing damage or climbing. It actually gives them advantage on athletics checks to climb any surface that talons could reasonably grip. Okay. And a lot of these um, bird folk creatures, again, have glide, some have talons. The Corvum has talons. Um, now they also get to choose proficiency in one of the following, arcana, history, nature, or religion. Remember, they're, they're very intelligent. And they have this really cool feature called appraising eye. What this is, is the book describes it as a almost supernatural ability to appraise objects. They can spend an action examining an object and they can determine any magical properties it may have, how it's used or activated, and the fair market price of that item. Now, it does say that this strains their eyes and you can only do it once per short or long rest. I thought that was a really, really cool ability that the Corvums have. There are two sub-races of Corvums available, Dusk and Kindled. Dusk are more at home in society than in the forest, and they get plus one to dex, and they have advantage on stealth checks and proficient in insight. Kind of sounds like a rogue in the making there, isn't it? Be really cool for a character like that. The other one is the Kindled. 
The kindled it describes as you know you're the smartest person in the room and you understand others' motivations really well. You get plus one to charisma. They have two features. One of them is called convincing and means that they have a really good way with words. You can choose proficiency in either deception or persuasion. And they get advantage on charisma checks of trying to convince someone of your knowledge on a topic to the proficiency that you chose. Remember, arcana, history, nature, or religion. So that's cool too. Um, sharp mind is the other feature of a kindled corvum, which is, you know, an additional language of your choice. You get proficiency in a tool of your choice. And this is cool. You can recall with perfect accuracy anything you've seen or heard in the last month. That might be really handy to your adventuring party. Now, with the plus two intelligence to Corvums in general, these characters are actually really going to make great wizards. Although also getting the plus one to the dust Corvum would make a great fighter, monk, ranger, or rogue. Plus one for the charisma kindled Corvum might make a good bard, paladin, sorcerer, or warlock. So this is just your base race, but there's a lot of different classes you could choose with this one. All right, thanks for joining us as we went over Corvums, the Corvum race in the Humblewood campaign. Next up is some more of the bird folk. I can't remember which one's next. I think it's the Luma. But make sure you join us for all the videos in this series. You can learn all about all the races in Humblewood. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, please make sure you hit that like button and give us a thumbs up so more friends can find us. Thanks. Bye-bye.